Okay. Does it, do you hear that message too, where it says recording in progress? Okay. I assume so. I assume everybody sort of be, I always try to disclose, hey, I'm going to record. Uh, let me share my screen, desktop number two. You guys see what looks like a browser window and another browser window and some windows action and stuff, hopefully. All right, so um, I'll go here first. But basically, this is a website called CAD Mapper. Um, it has both open source map information um, and GIS information, similar to the ArcGIS uh, system that Kate mentioned the other day. Um, and uh, what it does is it aggregates this information and then can spit it out for you um, in AutoCAD, SketchUp, Rhino, or Illustrator files. So I'm going with Rhino 5, which I actually have because um, a long time ago I bought Rhino 5 and then we just upgraded to 6 like with $20, 6 with $20. Seven with twenty dollars. So getting started creating creating a file. Um, I just wanted to sort of show you what this involves. It's not too bad. Um, I'll give you a Google Map sort of thing. You define the area. There's a certain amount of area you can um, uh, get for free. Uh, uh, if you go over a kilometer by kilometer, then they ask you to to pay for a subscription. Um, but you know we don't need to go that far. That's quite a bit of territory to to do. But um, Essentially, it gives you this information. Um, it has this street information, the center lines. It asks you for the widths of typical widths of streets, um, typical widths of streets. Excuse me, sorry. And uh, and then it also has building outlines and things like that. Um, if it has the information for the heights of buildings, it'll actually extrude them up if you wanted to. Um, it doesn't have that for downtown Las Vegas, but it looks like it does for parts of Hong Kong, Paris, London, New York, Manhattan. I see Copenhagen here, oddly specific, but okay, maybe there. Um, and then, uh, but uh, suffice to say, this will give us at least uh, the curves and lines, the drawing um, that we can then begin to surface in various ways, right? So I think that was that was pretty important. Last time, what we did is we started by drawing shapes and then surfacing them. In this case, it'll spit out um, a good amount of information at us in the form of lines and curves, and it's up for us to sort of surface it and make it three dimensional. All right, so getting started creating a file, this is just sort of the workflow here. I mean, it, it's not a coincidence that it just zeroed in on our site, which if you can see my cursor is right over here, right? This is the parking garage to the north. There's that Denny's and Necropolis or whatever. This is where the, the um, Slotzilla thing starts and uh, downtown, sorry, what is it? Not uh, Fremont Street experience is along here in Fremont Street. Um, this is Carson, this is Bridger, this is um, Las Vegas Boulevard, 4th Street, 3rd Street, this one's 6th over here, The Beat, wow, they still have The Beat across from the tie. That was back when there was a coffee shop, I think it's more of a bar or pub now. Um, so it'll say, okay, if, if there are 3D buildings available, go ahead and extrude those bad boys up and make them three-dimensional. If not, they'll just, we'll get the footprints, um, including your topography. Here's a little bit of topography. It's spread out, it's not much, it's a relatively flat area, it's paved. We're sort of at the bottom of the bowl here. Um, if you think about our, our valley as a sort of, you know, um, concave uh, landform. And, uh, and so uh, we can let it do that and that's fine. Uh, I'll actually let it do the contours every one meter or so. Um, but the road geometry I want is outlines and I've added in the, the sort of uh, typical, um, uh, right of way um, for for the roads here in Las Vegas, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of ten meters, thirty four to thirty six feet, um, depending on how many lanes it is. Um, so again, this will give us something that we can work with. Um, this is less than a kilometer, still quite a bit. And once I'm ready, I just say create file. It says minimum contour interval is four meters, so I'll go ahead and set that to four. I guess it'll tell me when I have an error in my parameters. Um, so it's starting to sort of figure this out. It'll give us a preview and then ask us if we want to download it or not. It looks like one or two buildings. I don't know how accurate that is. It looks like it thinks it has some tight information for like three different buildings here, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe that, maybe this is a, uh, maybe a hotel tower of some sort, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure about that, but we can always go back and extrude things up. Um, ourselves based off of um, uh, Google Street View and, and shadows and Google Maps. So um, topography is very slight. So I guess over the course of almost a, a kilometer, 
um, you know, there's like an eight meter difference um, across, across, that's a big, big area here. Um, we might crop this further. Maybe we don't need all of this, um, but uh, it'd be nice to have a significant part of the city, um, at least in some sort of massing, not maybe not detailed, of course, but some sort of massing. I downloaded it, um, opened it up in Rhino. Um, anyway, if you go to the AAE 711 uh, Studio Canvas page, go to the modules under the place module. There's a new page called Site Modeling Progress where we can continue to share things back and forth as we start to model these things um, and diagram them. But here uh, on that page, I put a link to the, the Rhino file you can download that's to scale in units of feet and inches. So here's the base CAD file I'd like for you to download and, and open on your end and we'll start there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up on my end. Shout if you need me to slow down or anything. Um, the chat box is on the other, well, there's the chat box, finally got the pop-up. It's gonna be on the other screen, so I might not necessarily see it right away. If it's critical that you have a quick question or want me to slow down or, or redo something in front of you so you can see better what I did, um, just shout at me. You don't have to shout loud, just, you know. <laughs> anyway, um, here we are, A711. Summer 2021 site map with some underscores in between. Camel cased it with some capital S, capital M's, stuff like that. Um, so this is kind of what it looks like. This is the output it gives you. All right. I'm just gonna blow up my perspective view for a moment and put this on maybe ghosted, right? So we can see we actually have a surface and you can see in the front view that it actually slopes, right? Now the question is, is that enough of a slope for our purposes to actually include it? I would argue no. I would argue we would just, for all our intents and practical purposes, we would just, we would basically just, um, uh, let's say make this all planar and assume that the, the ground is planar for right now. Um, you know, when there's actual topography that to, to speak of then, you know, in a project like that, we would, we want to be careful about about uh, the landforms and, and making sure you know we have some accuracy there. Okay, so one of the first things I'm going to do, if I go to perspective view, so I'm just going to take this surface or mesh or whatever that I've generated for the the slight topography, but basically that ground plane that's sort of tilted. I'm going to select it. And I'm going to delete it away. Okay. You can see once that goes away, it's easier to make out some of the details of building outlines and road outlines, et cetera, right? You can see in the layers, there is a layer for buildings, a layer for parks, a layer for outlines. Those are road outlines and building for topography. I think I just deleted away the topography. Sorry, if you're really interested in the topography. This is pretty slight across the entire site there. Um, I do not trust the accuracy of this height extrusion. If I delete that, it's going to get rid of the whole outline. I don't want to get rid of the outline. I want to, I want to basically extract the building outline, the, the footprint here at the bottom of this extrusion. And then I can delete that extrusion away afterwards, right? So I want to, want to get these edge curves of this poly surface, right? This, this big block of building. I want to get the bottom edge curves of that and, uh, and convert them into curves and put them on, on buildings. And... Uh, and then I can delete away that surface. And it's probably be the same thing. Oops, I actually grabbed that and, and moved it. Sorry, I'm just gonna control Z and undo that. Slight movement there. I'm gonna do it for this one and this one as well. This is a little, little slivery pie slice of some sort of resort along Fremont Street, it looks like. Yeah, this is Fremont Street right there. And then this road with the boulevard, that's Las Vegas Boulevard. And then here, this road right here should be about you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 35 feet wide or so is um, uh, Carson. All right. So one of the things you'll notice again, when I look at this from a side, like from the front and right, is all of this curve information, it doesn't exist on the same plane. 
it's slowly sort of sloping in that Z axis, right? You can see all these lines and curves, right? None of them are planar. That's gonna present problems for us, okay? So one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a planar surface underneath all of this line information. Then I'm gonna project all this line information onto that plane. So I have a copy of all of these roads and, and building outlines, okay? Um, but, but they'll now be planar. They'll be all on one sort of XY um, plane. Right? Okay. In order to do that, first of all, I wanna, can, I wanna preserve like the different or the various, um, I don't know what say, layers that things are on, okay? So I'm gonna do this really carefully, okay? First, I mentioned that there's one, two, now there's actually a few more than I saw before. One, two, three, four, five extrusions. And I just wanna get their bottom outlines. Um, and then I can delete away those extrusions. Actually, this one doesn't look so bad. Maybe I'll just leave that one. Well, you know what? Never mind. I'm not because I'm going to project all these downwards onto a plane. So, yeah. All right. So I'll go ahead and um, do that. So, first things first, I'm going to take this mass. You can see it's literally just a, a surface. But I, I just want these, these edge curves along the bottom, right? These edges. I'm gonna convert them into curves. So I'm just gonna undo that and put that right back in its spot where it should go, okay? And I'm gonna to go to this tool set. I'm, my cursor is over here on the left in the, this toolbar, okay? And I'm gonna click and hold and pull out several toolbars that we're gonna to use a lot of today, okay? And the first one is this one where it looks like this sort of uh, four-sided surface. You see all four vertices as well. Click and hold and pull that out and this, are all the different ways, more than you wanted probably, ways that we can begin to create surfaces in Rhino, okay? Depending on what our starting ingredients are and, and, uh, and what the kind of output that we want is, right? We can, you know, start to snap points and define corners and make a surface to fill it in between. We can um, take a set of closed planar curves and just fill it in with a surface. Um, we can take sort of curves that sort of define a sort of section and then skin in between them. Um, we can just take a, a profile in a direction and then extrude along that direction. On and on and on. There's lots of different ways that we can create surfaces. We can revolve a surface, so a profile, and then define an axis of revolution, and then we can revolve a surface. That's really handy if you're making like a wine goblet or something, but you know, not necessarily for um, the site stuff. Okay, so that's the first one, right? It was this icon here. And if I click and hold, Right, then I actually see that, well, this is a set of tools, all the different ways I can create surfaces. Okay. Next to it, if I click and hold, are a bunch of different things I can do to edit surfaces. Once they're created, now I can do other things with them. I can blend two of them together. I can fill at their corners or chamfer the corners or edges between two. I can offset a surface. I can, you know, on and on and on and on. I can rebuild them, whatever. So those are my surface tools. This is how we make surfaces and this is how we edit them once they're made, okay? And then this one right here, it looks like it has a little halo, like a circle being projected onto a surface, okay? If I click and hold that, right? There's a whole lot of different tools on sort of extracting curve information from surfaces, right? And one of those, Okay, so I'm just gonna click and hold. I've pulled all three of these out. I'm just sort of keeping them over here on the side for a while. Instead of having to sort of constantly click and hold over here, um, I can pull them out. And, uh, and over here, they're, they're kind of helpful. They're right, right there for me. But one of the things I can do is I can duplicate the edge of a surface, right? I can duplicate all of the edges or borders of a surface or polysurface. I can, you know, face borders, et cetera. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use the face border. It's gonna say, select the surface or face for duplicating the border. And I'm just going to, oops, just gonna tilt this upwards because I just want to, to sort of select the bottom face of this, this sort of uh, poly surface here, right? So and it looks like I have, I've selected just the bottom surface because it's outlining it for me. And in fact, those magenta outlines 
that's exactly the edges that I want to convert into a curve or a set of curves. I'm going to hit enter. And you can see instead of it might look yellow on yours, but it's magenta on mine because I've slipped, I've changed my selection color. Now I have these new curves here that it's created for me. And I'm just going to tilt it down. I'm going to just you know prove it here. I'll just delete this poly surface. And you can see that I have that bottom edge now here ready to use. Look at that. And it's already joined together for me, which is kind of nice. So this is one big poly curve, sort of all joined together. It's a bunch of little line segments, but they're all joined to form one closed shape. All right. Now, how many of you are actually trying to follow along and did it work? If not, try it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and undo. Control Z, Control Z. All right. Again, we're going to use a couple of the tools from this curve from object set of tools, right? So it's this one, looks like a little halo over the surface, the halo projected onto the surface. It's a sort of a circle looking in, in the oblique angle, right? Being projected onto a surface. We're going to actually going to use that tool specifically here in a bit to project these down onto a planar, um, the planar surface that we create. But for the time being, if we click and pull that out, right? We're going to use a different tool from this set of, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, buttons here. And the one I'm going to use right now is duplicate face border, right? Duplicate face border. The command, if you're writing this down, in case you can actually remember it, is dupe for, you know, short for duplicate, dupe face border, all one word. But basically, it's going to say, okay, select a face of one of these poly surfaces, and I'm going to duplicate the border of that uh, surface and create, it, create a set of curves from that border. Okay, so I do that. You know, if there's any ambiguity about, you know, which face I'm trying to select, it might come up with a little menu saying, okay, which one, you're, you're, you're so close that we really can't tell if you're trying to select this face or this face, and it'll, it'll let you go back and forth between the two. But you're looking for which one gets highlighted here. And when that's the right one's highlighted, hit enter. Okay, and now it's gonna leave that, those uh, those edges as as a sort of poly curve behind here. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. All right, so I want you guys to practice that. I'm gonna go around and do it to all of these. There's one, two. There should be like four more of these I need to do. So I have one over here. It looks like you know, this little dude. I mean, it's so trivial. In fact, I think this is part of Container Park, right? So here's the footprint of all those containers. Shipping containers. Here's a couple more. This is like the bandstand or concert shell or something, or I don't know, whatever is off to the, the side here. For whatever reason, somebody decided to extrude that. It beats me. I, I don't know. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and look at this. All right. Again, I'm just going to go to du duplicate the face border. I'm going to select that bottom face, right? You can see that this poly surface is comprised of a top face, a bottom face. This face, this face, another face, one, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. So eight faces, including the top and bottom. I'm just gonna tilt it upward so I can get underneath it and just try to select, make sure I'm selecting that bottom face. Once that's highlighted, hit enter. Now I can delete that extrusion away. I just have the footprint. Yay. Right. I'm just going to do the same thing for these three over here. Is it going OK so far? Are you guys trying this back, back at your, your computers? No point even trying to trace. We can just extract and then, and then delete. Duplicate face border, get that bottom face. You know, I'm going to do three at, the t at a time now. Yeah, look at that. Do that face. I'm going to do this face. I'm just underneath it, like a worm, almost under the ground, looking at those bottom faces. And hit enter. I can do all three at once. Oh, yeah, look at that. Boss dog, look at that. Feels good to be a gangster sometimes. Just say that, you know. Something goes right. It's always good to celebrate when, like, something actually works, right? Technology. I mean, technology is so fallible. It's, it's always nice when things go according to plan. 
Okay, so we have all of those footprints. All right. Now, how's it going? You guys able to follow along? Does anybody need more time before I move on to the next step? I'm not hearing anything. I'm not seeing anybody waving their hands in the air. Honestly, my laptop just shut down on me, so I'm just going to be waiting until it pops up again. <laughs> okay. I just got ben, one more building to go. One more building to go. Okay, I'll wait a few minutes. Brent, on your on your case, you can probably catch up as soon as your your computer restarts. But just watch what happens, and I'm recording this, so you can always go back to these first steps if you need to remember back. Like what what was this duplicate? Uh, face boundary or whatever commander. Um, okay. How'd you get rid of all the, the grid lines? I just selected that that sort of mesh or surface that it created uh -huh. and deleted okay. it. Okay. Yeah, just hit delete, just selected it and hit delete. Yeah, got it. We're gonna create our own and it's gonna be planar. And it's gonna be on that XY plane. So um, it's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty, pretty good. Now, one thing you might notice here, I had my parks layer check marked. And that meant that when I generated these curves, they were put on the parks layer instead of the, the building outline layer. Are there any parks in this scene? I don't even know if there are any parks here to speak of. Sorry, I just pulled this off. So I was just on the side where I let everybody sort of keep going and catch up. I'm just gonna take a look at this. Just gonna turn off all the layers except for parks. Let's see what I have here. And this looks very much like all of the outlines I just created, um, except for this little green area where they have that uh, treehouse slide and container park here. They actually, <laughs> that's funny. They actually made this sort of kidney bean shaped um, uh, grass area, turf area. <laughs> and they actually mapped that here on the thing. I'm actually just going to take all of these outlines, and this one and this one included. I'm just going to select them all, go to the properties. It's right next to layers, right? Over here on the right hand side of the, the software. The color wheel here is talking about properties. So everything I have selected, I can see like its name and its layer. All of these are on the parks layer. I'm just going to turn that to buildings layer, and they're going to disappear mainly because I turned the buildings layer off. But now that means that they disappeared. That means that they're on the, everything else that disappeared on the buildings layer. So I can turn that back on now. Okay, good. Yeah, it makes me so happy. All right, so it looks like everything's on the, on the right layer again this time. Now there's a couple of other things that are gonna throw a little bit of a wrench into our plans here. Another issue is that the street grid is not true north-south and yet, it can be a lot easier sometimes, I would argue, to model things if you're looking, if you're looking at sort of X and Y axes as sort of north, south, east, west um, axes. So I think we have as a group to sort of think about this and maybe tilt this so that north is an up, but then at least we can, when we're modeling and we turn our ortho on to constrain to X and, and Y, we can constrain things and work within this sort of block geometry, okay? So I'm just going to do this in my top view. You guys are ready. I'm gonna look at this in top view. I'm gonna basically end up rotating all of this stuff in top view. I'm gonna make sure all my layers are on and I'm gonna select everything, make sure everything's selected. I'm going to the rotate tool. I can just type in rotate, honestly. It's going to ask for a center of rotation. And you know, I'm going to rotate about one of these streets. And I'm going to be very careful and pick, maybe I'll pick Carson from Las Vegas Boulevard as my center of rotation here. Okay, so I'm going to click on that corner. And it's going to ask me, do I want to type in an angle to rotate it? Or do I want to give it a reference point? I'm going to give it a reference point. I'm going to go ahead and click somewhere else on this corner, like maybe oh, this corner over here on Carson and Fourth. Okay. Now it's going to tell me, okay, how much do you want to rotate it? I'm going to turn off my object snaps because it appears to be sort of 
you know, I'm gonna turn off my ortho for a minute. You can see now I can drag this and give it a target sort of reference point, right? When I'm done rotating. In this case, I can turn my ortho on. And now I'm gonna, I can actually turn it so that um, um, that sort of reference axis, the X axis that I defined will now be, you know, will snap now to the, the actual Cartesian X axis, right? So boom, there we go. So there's my, my block right here. This is my site right in here along this, this block. There's the edge of the street. There's Las Vegas Boulevard with the median down it. Um, we have some work to do, right? You know, for instance, we'll have to fill it or round off these corners, right? Like they do for street um, corners. Um, but this will allow us when we're actually modeling things, you know, we can start to model using the XY orthos snaps and things like that um, a lot easier and work within our block. Um, we just have to remember that north is actually like pointed, you know, more like in this direction, right? Um, so not true, no up and down in this case, right? But it shouldn't be too hard to do that. In fact, north is this, this line right here. North is pointed in the, off into this direction. Yeah, that's our north arrow. Okay. All right. Now I didn't forget. I want to go ahead and project this down onto a, a flat planar surface, right? I want to make all of this stuff planar. Again, I look at it in these various views and I can sort of see that, you know, these things sort of slip down slowly in Z axis. Um, as you move across the downtown area. And so I'm going to do this really carefully. I want you to just sort of watch and listen and, and sort of watch what I do, um, listen to the logic of what I'm doing and why. Okay, first things first in top view, I'm gonna create a planar surface. I'm gonna use, again, we pulled out these tools before, this first set, surface creation, this is all the different ways we can use to, to make surfaces, right? In this one, rectangular plane by drawing a corner to a corner, right? That's probably, probably the easiest way to make a planar rectangle surface here. You can see that in my perspective view, right? You can see all of these, this curve information above it. I'm gonna project the curve information onto the surface, okay? One more thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and select all this curve information, all the, all the sort of stuff I got from the CAD mapper file. I'm gonna make sure it's all selected. I'm not gonna select my, my surface, just the, just the line information, just the drawing. And in my front view, I'm just gonna move it up in Z to make sure that my ortho is on. I'm just gonna move it up. And so that way, when I project all this stuff down onto this plane, you know, I'll be able to easily then select all of this stuff and not accidentally select any of this stuff on the plane and just delete all of this non-planar stuff away when I'm done. Okay. I'm gonna leave these four viewports up. I'm gonna be working in top view. And I'm gonna to go to, again, this third tool set here, curve from objects. This first one is project curves onto a surface. Okay. I'm gonna click that. I can look at my command line. It's gonna say, select any curves or points that you wanna project. So in my top view, I'm gonna select all of these, all of the, the sort of drawing stuff from, um, from CAD Mapper, okay. And uh, when I'm done, I'm gonna hit enter. And it's gonna say, select the surface that you wanna project onto. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and select this surface. And I'm gonna hit enter. It's gonna take a few minutes and it's gonna project this stuff onto the surface, right? Ta-da. Now we have that exact same drawing, but instead of being on a really crumpled piece of paper that's not planar, we've projected it onto a planar piece of paper, right? Now I'm gonna undo this and just show you one more thing that I forgot to do, right? And that's because when I created all these new curves by projecting them, projecting these old curves onto the surface, I had my parks layer selected. And so all of these new curves, all of my map, instead of being organized on building layer and outline layers and park layers, they're now all on the parks layer. That's not good. I wanna keep those things organized. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. 
I'm gonna take this one step further. I'm gonna make the buildings the active layer and I'm gonna turn all the other layers off. And, uh, oh, including, I guess, my surface, oops, sorry. I'm gonna turn all my layers off that I can. I'm gonna put this, um, this surface that I created on its own layer, okay? So again, I'm in the layers tab. I've turned off all of my layers. I, if I turn off my parks layer, I'm gonna get rid of this. I just need to put this on its own layer, okay? Um, in the layers box at the, along the top here, there's a new layer um, icon here. I can create a new layer. I'll call this planar surface. It's a temporary layer. I don't really need it after this. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this surface is selected. I'm going to go to the properties and then tell it to put it on this planar surface layer. Now I can turn the parks layer off. Okay. So now one layer at a time, for instance, you now all I have is the building outlines, right, um, on. I can basically project all the building outlines onto the surface, and I can leave the buildings outlines layer as the active layer so that all the new building outlines projected on this planar surface um, will be on the building outlines layer, okay? And that way there's all still sort of separated by layer. So I'm gonna do this layer by layer, layer at a time here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to top view, use the project, tool. All right, I've already selected the stuff. I'm going to select the surface to project onto. And there it is. All right. So now I have the curve information or the, the sort of build, all the building outlines on this plane. And I can delete all of the, the sort of non-planar building outlines up here that the old stuff. Go ahead and select that and delete. Now I'm going to turn the parks layer on as the active layer. Turn that building layers off. Go back to top view. It looks like I just have just the, you know, just a couple of little patches of park, parklet, I guess, in uh, container park. And so I'm just going to do the same thing now. Parks layer is the active layer. It's got a check mark next to it. I'm going to go to project curves on the surface, select those curves, hit enter, select the surface to project onto, hit enter, right? Now I have um, a planar set of these curves projected onto this, this surface. And so everything's going to be on that X, Y plane. It'll be really nice. I'm going to take this old stuff and delete it. All right. So now I can see I have both buildings and parks, park information now projected. What's left is, I'll turn those off. What's left is outlines, all the street outlines and surface parking stuff, alleyways, things like that. Okay, so I'm going to turn that to be my active layer. Turn parks off, turn my player su planar surface layer back on. All right, go to top view. I'm gonna go ahead and project all my roads. And then select the surface to project the roads onto. And there we are. All right, good. I always imagine, I, I don't know what the sound effect, sound effect would be for projection, but deleting is always like, if you're blowing something up, demoing, I don't know. All right, there we are. All right, okay, so now we have all of these on their own layer, which is handy. I deleted that planar surface. I didn't need that anymore. All this stuff is planar. It's really kind of handy to have. Yay. All right, so far so good. Now, conceptually, did that make sense? I mean, regardless of which button I picked and where, did that make sense, right? So I wanted to make sure that I kept everything on its own layer, so I. I did this one layer at a time. I made something flat. I projected all this stuff that wasn't flat onto the flat thing. So now it's all flattened. I can get rid of the unflat stuff up above. Do that layer by layer. And that way I keep everything separated by layer. Roads and blocks versus building outlines versus park outlines. Okay, great. All right. Now, do you guys need some time to actually execute that on your own? If so, that's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. I want everybody to try this during this demonstration. It's like a workshop over this afternoon. But don't worry. At the end, if you missed one step or yours isn't quite right, I'm going to take the results at the end of this and post them again. Okay, so that everybody has the same sort of baseline uh, model stuff. Okay. But I just wanted to sort of make sure everybody's on the same page here. Like, where did this come from? It's practice with modeling. 
sort of understanding some of the, the basic stuff you have to do when it comes to getting a CAD file of the sites and, and turning it into a sort of three-dimensional surface-based uh, virtual model, et cetera. Kind of weird to see it in this without the satellite photo underneath, right? We're gonna clean some of this stuff up too. So for instance, this driveway into the parking garage, I'm gonna get rid of those because that looks lame <laughs> um, to be blunt about it, right? I'm gonna just close off this block and make it just a sort of solid block. And we're gonna do some things to sort of, you know, again, to round off corners, right? Um, which we can make a reasonable assumption of based off of measuring in, in Google Maps. And um, every municipality again has certain codes. So, you know, these, uh, these sort of standards like the radius of the roundedness of the corners for city blocks and downtown areas, right? That's probably different in Las Vegas than it is in Tucson, which is probably also different than Portland, probably also different than Salt Lake City and on and on and on and on, right? So um, uh, Albuquerque is probably different, you know, I mean, it, I could just go on and on and on, right? But um, suffice to say, I want to make sure that we're, we're sort of on the right track here for understanding how to clean these things up. Now, how's it going? Were you guys able to project? Do you have any problems with project? How many of you remembered to project by selecting everything when you're in the top view? Because it's going to project perpendicular to the working plane that you're working at. So like top view, you're looking at the XY plane. So it's going to project in that Z direction, right? Sort of parallel with your eyeballs. All right, so it's always important that you, in this case, that we're, we're projecting in top view downwards in Z. Um, so anyway, just thought I'd throw that out there. Oh, excuse me. I'm not getting any indication of like, if this is working back at your desk or not, or where everybody's at. I know Brent, you're playing a little game of catch up, but um, yeah, I just scheduled a service for my laptop, so that's fine. Is your laptop okay? Oh no. Nope. Is it uh, PC? Um, I think so. It's on um, Windows something. Yeah. I usually go with my Apple stuff, but I got a different one that supports home software. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. So I'm just going to replay this video. Right. I have to replay and see um, the, the thing with the plane. So I have I got to that point and um, I don't remember all the commands, so I have to, to look at it again. All right. That's fair. OK, so there's several things that we need to keep doing to clean this thing up. One, I would argue, is that you know, I'll blow up the perspective view real quick. Let's take a look. One is if I just turn off the buildings and parks and let's just look at the outline of the roads. What it's done is it's almost done the opposite of what we need. It's outlined the roads and not necessarily outlined the blocks. I would argue that it'd be easier to sort of, you know, have the, the blocks as these sort of closed shapes, right? Um, and the roads is the sort of negative space, and it's almost the exact opposite, okay? So that's one thing I'm gonna show how to do is we're gonna draw a box and trim and then, and then start to re-split and, and trim things and then rejoin things um, to sort of turn things inside out a little bit here. Um, we'll actually clean up the block information as we do that. And then we'll go through and start to round off corners So let's start there. The other thing, the other big step that we need to do is then go through, once we have that done, um, let's say uh, the outlines, the, the, the street outlines done, is we'll go to the building outlines. And we need to carefully, building by building, block by block, make a reasonable guesstimate of the height of each building mass and then extrude those up as solids, each one. We can, I think, reasonably do that 
through a combination of Google Maps and other photography, the street street view and things like that. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about how you can sort of gauge this stuff without um, without driving yourself too crazy. Okay. But minus actually having literal information, a bunch of as-built drawings of every single building this part of downtown, I think we can make some reasonable assumptions based off the length of shadows and then looking at things in them in Google Street View. And I'll, again, I'll, I'll show you how you can start to count certain modules and, and make some educated guesses on heights. It doesn't have to be close, but you know, ballpark for all these sort of surrounding context, context buildings, contextual buildings. Um, Okay, so that those are the two big steps, and that's going to take a while, right? We're going to go over more of these things tomorrow in uh, the morning class, and then this will be an ongoing assignment for you to continue um, all through the weekend up to Tuesday, right? So on Tuesday, then I expect to see sort of completed site models. Okay. Okay. And again, every step of the way, we'll try to record these things, but I'm just sort of letting you know where this is going, right? All right, so. Right now, all we have are lines and curves. So we're gonna surface all of this stuff, but we, we have some cleanup to do, like I mentioned before. So let's look at these street outlines, right? Which are, we need to turn the street outlines into block outlines. Uh, painful, to, painful to say that, but when you look at this stuff, it's like, oh my goodness gracious. Um, but nevertheless, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go to top view. We made sure all of this stuff is planar. So that's good, that's helpful. I'm gonna to go to my drawing tools, right? If you look at my left-hand side here, this toolbar, my mouse, I have a cursor, points, curves, surfaces, right? We use points to make curves. We use curves to make surfaces. We have some curves. I'm gonna draw a few more here. I'm gonna to go to the polyline tool. I'm just going to, I'm gonna turn my object snaps back on. So I had it disabled, I had to toggle it off, toggle those back on. My object snaps, remember, they'll let me find an endpoint or a midpoint or where two things intersect, or if I have something rounded, a center point, and things like that. I can turn those things on or off as I go. Just going to take a sort of larger look outwards. Now, we gave ourselves a big area, bigger than we ever needed, right? And there's a lot of stuff here that we don't you know. We can trim this back a little bit if we want to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the endpoint of this road. You know the, the portion of this road that's that's sort of drawn before it starts to round off and cap itself based off of where the drawing is is just sort of cropped. I'm gonna go all the way down here and do the same thing over here, right? So what I'm doing is I'm gonna draw an edge that I'm gonna use to crop some of these edges and loose ends of these roads. And do the same thing all the way around. So again, I'm gonna come back here and find where it starts to round off that that street outline with a rounded cap. I have my objects or my ortho on. I'm going to turn ortho off. I'll leave my object snaps on because I'm snapping every time. I'm just going to try to find an endpoint here. Maybe like right there. Sure. Why not? Okay. I'm just going to go across and try to find these sort of these main geometries that I can use here. Try to find that end, there we are. They don't have to go all the way across either. In fact, that's the, the point I'm hopefully demonstrating here. I have intersection, I'm gonna turn that off and center and mid, just use end and see, there we go. Go from here to here, let's say. All right, now I'm gonna extend these out. So I form corners around this and basically make a shape that we use to sort of trim and, and split things out. Okay. I want them to be sort of fairly close to sort of the edges, you know. Um, so there's a couple of different ways I'm gonna do this. Just like with surfaces, I have the surface creation tools and I have the editing tools next to a door. Okay, I have curve making tools. There's lots of different types of curves, polylines, um, control point curves and different types of polygons, circles, arcs, um, you know, rectangles, etc. But there's another set here where I can edit curves, right? So not making curves, but editing them once they're made, right? And one type of 
way to do that is called fillet curves and chamfer curves. So fillet um, means just this, right? Like let's say I have a, a curve, uh, a corner, two curves coming together. I can give it a, a, a radius and then they'll actually round off those curves. And we're gonna use that tool to actually round off all of these corners here in a little bit. But first, I'm gonna use the fillet tool just to sort of square off all of these corners. So I'm gonna say, select the first curve to fillet and the second curve to fillet, but it's also gonna ask me for the radius. If I turn that radius to zero, it's just gonna make a perfect corner for me and, and join these things up. So I'm gonna say, there's the first curve, there's a second curve, boom. Now I've found that corner for me and joined all both of those two, extended them, and then made that sort of corner for me. The fillet is, has a zero radius, so it made a nice sharp corner. I'm gonna right click to repeat the last command, and fill it again. This time I'm gonna select this and this. There we are. And then right click to, to do that command again, here and here. And then right click and do that one to that one. All right. That still looks kind of off to me. I don't know. This one clearly is off. So I'm gonna go undo, 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 undo. Here's another way of thinking about this. Let's say I have, I like this, this edge and this edge. I wanna make sure that the other edges are parallel to them. I can copy, right? Here's the copy command, or I can type in copy as a command. I can select this and I can just move it over, right? Till I have exactly where I want to form another frame here. I'm just gonna move this in a bit. I'll do the same thing with this one. Make a copy over here. Is that some sort of roundabout? Oh, what a pain in the rear. I'm just gonna crop that out, right? Sort of shorten this up and you know, make this a little smaller. All right. Now I'm gonna go back to fill it. Make sure my fill it radius is zero. Click, click. Square these things off. All right. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to make, um, oh, sorry, I'm just going to undo that one last time. <laughs> I know I keep doing this and then undoing. I'm just going to move this in. Again, I'm going to try to get rid of some of the, some of the stuff that we don't necessarily need. Yeah. There we go. Just sort of then set this in. Crop a little more out. Um, you know, I mean, I was just sort of ballparking how much map I wanted when, um, in the CAD mapper. Uh, app there, but uh, you know now I can I can fine tune these things you know a little more. Okay, back to fill it. I'll go ahead and fill these fill it these things. Okay, now I'm going to use this larger shape, this sort of rounded rectangle or sorry rotated rectangle. I'm going to use it to trim off all of this loose stuff on, on the edges that I don't want. Okay. All right, so here it goes. Now type in the command trim. Okay, and I'm gonna look at the command line. It's gonna say select cutting objects. So I'm gonna use, use this as my cutting object, all four of these lines. Okay, and hit enter. Now it says, okay, select the object to trim, right? Now I wanna trim this, like for instance, this street, but I wanna make sure that I'm selecting the side of the street that I want to delete away. Okay, so I'm gonna go along the outside and start clicking on these things that I wanna trim away using this out, new outline that I created. Again, here, now this is definitely demolition. So I can you know, make the sound effect as if I'm using dynamite to get rid of all this concrete. Asphalt. This isn't actually intersected by the cutting tool. So I can't really trim it, but I can delete it away in a minute. So all that stuff that's cut by that tool, I can trim trim all the, this outside stuff away. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's much better. All right, now I'll go ahead and just, I'll hit enter when I'm done and I'll, I'll just go ahead with my cursor and start selecting all this stuff that's out completely outside of this outline. Select it and delete it away. 
Ta -da. I missed one little thing there to trim. So type in trim. There's my cutting tool, enter. Now select the object to trim. I'm going to select this side of it, enter. This seems trivial. I'll just get rid of this. I'm going to do a little bit of selective editing here. Right. Again, I'll probably, before I do too much more, I'll probably turn my buildings on. Now I have building um, outlines to also trim away, right? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and type in trim. Select the cutting objects. I'll go ahead and select this larger outline again. Okay, so I'm just recropping this model now. I drew my own sort of crop box here. I'm using it to trim these things out. Now the building outlines as well. I did the street outlines before. There's hardly just a little bit of a sliver there. So eventually I'll probably just go back and delete that away. For all practical purposes, it's just not there. Just going through and quickly, carefully doing the trim out here. And another little sliver of a corner, I'll probably just end up deleting instead of trying to just having a little sliver there look kind of weird. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this stuff away. All this outside stuff can go. Go along the edges here, that, that's that corner I was talking about, just blow that away. Okay. I wish there was a foolproof way to get everything with detail, just one click of a button, but unfortunately, not so much, at least not for free. Use that, trim that out just a little bit there in this table, little corner, wasn't zoomed in enough to see it. Here's another one I missed. I'll worry about what that is later. I might just delete it away since it's on the periphery of a, of a context model, you know. There's that little sliver of a cylinder left. There's that. All right. Our parks are still nicely within the crop area. Okay. Well, that's good at least. Okay. So I'm going to turn off buildings and parks. Let's just take a look at the street information, right? Now, again, beyond just having the, the main roads, streets, and, and block outlines, it has like a lot of turn-ins, curb cuts, um, lanes, that kind of stuff. Stuff that somebody was looking at an aerial map and then drew center lines of for roads, alleyways, right-of-ways, um, right-of-ways in, uh, in the GIS. So I would argue that there's more stuff here than we ever needed to be honest. So one of the things I'm gonna do using this as a guide is I might just, you know, I'm not really all that interested in like where there's a curb and sidewalk versus um, uh, parking lot, right? So what I, the thing I might begin to do here in order to sort of clean this up a little better Is start to block out my blocks as true rectangles, snapping to each sort of corner. Or maybe half of a block, right? You know, and preserve the alleyways. But, you know, essentially I'm going to clean this up. There's more information here than I ever wanted to be a blunt about it, honest. Um, you know, and, and 
where like it, it sees like a driveway and then it ends, it's put these like rounded caps on them, which then makes it look really sort of like, I don't know, gross and snakish. It's kind of weird, right? I'm not too fond of that. So, you know, in, in a lot of cases, um, I'm not necessarily interested in modeling parking lot curbs and things like that in detail. Um, but I do want to sort of see differentiation between blocks and streets, right? Sidewalk and blocks that the, the building sit on versus street. Okay, so um, let's see, what would be the best way to do this? I think I'm actually going to go with a polyline tool to make sure that my road outlines are, are selected. But I'm actually going to create a new layer. I'm going to call this, let's see, maybe if I can rename it here. Not sure why it's not letting me. Oh, it's because I'm in the middle of a command. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna call this um, street blocks or something like that. Okay, I'm gonna everything that I draw new over top of this outline layer. I'm gonna I'm gonna put on the street blocks layer. So I have that check mark there as the active layer. I'm gonna go to my polyline tools. I'm gonna snap around, maybe draw every sort of like half block in between. Um, in between uh, the uh, main streets and uh, in between um, uh, alleyways. Okay, same with this site, same with the this, this stuff right next to us. We're gonna assume that we're gonna have to preserve an alleyway here to sort of serve the back ends of us and our neighbors. If I accidentally click somewhere I don't want to while I'm making this polyline, I can always hit control Z and I'll undo the last click. Okay, just really carefully trying to, and we'll go back in and we'll zoom in, particularly on this block a little later and be more careful, right? I mean, we're eyeballing some things, but I don't know the width of this. And, you know, if this needs to be basically what we said, uh, 140 feet deep, and then um, we'll have 25, 25, 25, about 75 feet of, of width, right? Maybe three parcels or something to work with. But right now I'm just sort of blocking this out and then I can go through and, and look at this in more detail later. There's the block I drew the other, the other time here. Let me go ahead and get rid of that. Okay, I'm just gonna go through and do this. Where, where I have alleyways sort of um, uh, preserved, I'm gonna go ahead and, and draw it. Otherwise, I'm gonna simplify even more. Just go around the whole block here. The further away I get from our actual site, the less detail I actually need, you know, I would argue. I can always also use project and smart track and find those hypothetical intersection areas. So I'm turning on um, project, smart track, and then an intersection object snap. And now it'll find that hypothetical intersection where if that line was that I snapped to before was, was actually projected out to the, where it would intersect that, that top edge. Just kind of handy. Go ahead and hit C. Oh. Sorry. Actually hit close here. Let me just redraw that. Do the same thing over in this corner, project upwards. There we go. If I get it back to the, the end, I want to just make sure it closes. I can hit C and enter to close. This is a big parking garage, it's a big uncontinued or continuous block. Parking garage on one side anyway. C and spacebar to close. Okay, so I'm starting to get these blocks, they're a little easier to sort of see. In this case, these bigger things where I have alleyway sort of in the T configuration, I'll go ahead and draw out those major parts of the blocks. Again, I'm not really interested in all of this, all of this nonsense with where there's a turnaround and a, you know, like right in, in the center of this one, right? I, I don't care about that so much. This one has an alleyway. 
that wraps around. Let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Oops. Go back around. I'm just sort of drawing now, but snapping and using the information I got. There's a little bit of cleanup here. By a little bit, I mean a lot, actually. Decent amount of cleanup here. I'm going to go to the edges here and make sure I really snap to that intersection. And I'm going to close this. All right. What's important about that, right, is that I want all of these to be sort of closed shapes, these blocks. So the same thing over here. All right. And because I have these outlines on different layer, I can turn them off and sort of check my progress, see which next, what the next block is I need to look at, right? So here are my new blocks. I'll probably draw those boulevards in or just change their layer so that they stay in as well. But I don't need all of this driveway information, you know, um, that, that's just unnecessary. And it's a lot of extra, extra crud. So I'm going through and redoing some of this. So here's another one I need to do. Let's see. Close that up. The same thing over here. Leave the alleyway. Let's see here. Make sure I'm snapping the right points. I can always zoom in and out as needed in order to sort of double check my accuracy. Sometimes that intersect point, sometimes you have too many snaps here. It's hard to tell what you're actually snapping to, right? So sometimes I just constrain it back down to just endpoints, trying to find, making sure I'm just getting right at that corner. What you'll find is that nothing done at sort of architectural urban design scale is, is with this completely square, um, or the tolerances are inches and feet. <laughs> And then when somebody's looking at this and then redrawing it, right? There's also accuracy lost, right? So um, you know now we're redrawing a drawing of somebody else redrew of a photograph of something that was, you know, within a tolerance of you know architectural and engineering tolerance, um, you know that wasn't uh, you know a manufacturing tolerance. So um, you know when I say close enough for government work, I I truly mean it. In this case, close enough for for our purposes. Um, because this is like an interpolation of an interpolation. Right? There's no reason to stress out too much as long as we're making a good faith effort to really sort of learn how to draw and model here. And at the end, we get a representation that's pretty close to the real deal. Then I'm happy. All right, so I've done a pretty good sized band of, of blocks going um, along the named streets, along that Carson corridor, still have a few things to, oops. I just, oh, there we go. I need to do a few things over here. But that Carson corridor is coming together pretty nicely. All right, so now over here, I mean, there's not enough really information. It's far enough away, I'm just going to, to do this. I'll draw that beyond. I'll draw this one. Let's see, the intersection point and also that way. I'll leave that median there. All right, let's turn off those outlines for a minute. Okay, yeah. So I need to trim these things out. Trim using this. Sometimes I draw past that that mark, don't worry, I can always just use it to trim again. Oh yeah, look at that. Turn off that outline. I just need to close these up. Snap, snap. Right click to repeat last command, snap, snap. Oh, what happened over here? Let's see, it's not right. Oh, I see. 
and delete that away. Turn that outline back on. Now snap over here, snap over there, snap over here. Oops, I still didn't do that quite right. All right, here we go. Click, click, click. There we are. Yay. All right. That's how I'm getting there, right? It just takes time and patience. Now, how good do you feel about this? <laughs> it seems like a lot of like, I'm watching and I'm gonna have to reread the video, redo the video, okay? I'm gonna keep going, even though I expect us to have to backtrack quite a bit tomorrow morning first thing, to sort of see where you're at. And just, again, there'll be another work session, okay? So don't freak out if I'm like going so fast that you're just like, what in the world? This, this recording is gonna be useful for you over, over the next couple of, next few days to be honest we're be watching this all night so what i would do is i would i would try to just do the first couple of steps tonight you know what i mean like rotating it around in plan view right um projecting and making sure everything's separated on layer on layers right we can always go back and do this step by step again um, and pick up tomorrow morning right i mean that's what it's for what I want to do is make sure everybody's on the same page and feels good about this so that over the weekend, you're not spinning your wheels. So I'm willing to do whatever it takes in person with you today, tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon, even um, in order to make sure that, you know, you have a productive weekend. Okay. So I'm just going to go through this really quickly. Keep going here. What I want to do is redraw all these blocks really quickly, turn the old blocks off. And then I'm going to actually start to surface things. I'm going to start to extrude things down, give some things some solid surface, um, give the street a surface. Okay. So that's where we're going here, essentially. All right. I don't want you to freak out. You're going to get as far as you can between now and tomorrow morning. And then tomorrow morning, we'll pick back up. And I'm going to see where everybody's at and we'll hit the things that we really need to re-hit. Again, just hoping I can have access to my software again today. Yeah, I mean, what's going on with your computer, Brent? Is it not booting up or? Well, honestly, it turns on. This little guy right here. Yeah. He turns on. I can hear the fan. I can hear the motherboard. But the screen just does not want to comply. Um, were you hearing like the processor fan, like kicking into high gear for a while? Um, Is it yeah. still warm? Yeah, and then it goes cold when I shut it off. All right, so you've let it cool off. Yeah. I probably turned it on and off about like a hundred times today already. Are you able to let it shut down in, in the operating system and reboot? Or are you uh, having to like force shut down? Uh, for scene shutdown because I can only use the power button to turn it on and off. Okay. Yeah, I will tell you the best buy soon to class, but yeah. Oh, here on, yeah, okay. If you have an appointment with Best Buy and if you need to go before the new class, that's fine. Um, the other thing I would say is you, know, you can always look and see if you can try to use button combinations to try to restart in safe mode or some other mode where it can boot up. If it's not booting up in regular mode and Windows. You were running Windows 10, I assume. So I don't know. I don't use Windows that often. I'm, I'm a Mac guy. I have MacBook Pro. MacBook Pros actually run Windows pretty well. Um, I'm running both in parallel with each other right now instead of doing the bootcamp thing even. But, but anyway, for what it's worth, um, you know, you might just Google that on your phone. I know you're actually trying to watch on your phone the Zoom thing, but, um, you know, you, let's see what Best Buy says. Okay. All right. I'm keeping my fingers super crossed. Do you have access to another computer, even temporarily, to download the an evaluation version? Like Honor. a super ancient Mac. Oh, that's a that's a super ancient iMac. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's. All right. I'm gonna go move on. Um, and uh, move this on. Is being Don't me. All right. All right. Oof, 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 oof. 
All right, so you can see we have more block information up here. I just need to do. Um, so I'm going to go through, I'll probably ad lib here. You know, it's not, not every block is the same, obviously. Let me see here. Snapping to some weird. So I'm going to snap. I want to make sure I get this corner. There we go. I'll get this corner, close that up. All right, and do the same thing here. I'm going to keep zooming in and out. Making sure I get just the right. I mean, to me, I don't know why that's sort of lopped off like that, but I'm gonna try to get this as close as I can there. Snap, snap, close. This is an entire block. It makes sense. I mean, it's a it's a big old development there. In this case, this is the Ogden, I believe. Close that up. I'll, I'll leave these medians in and deal with those later. I'm not actually going to worry about the driveway and the parking lot here. Just go ahead and close that up. All right. Oh, I already did that one. Okay. Let's see, I gotta figure out which ones I've done, which ones I haven't. Okay. So here we go. Just gonna zoom in here. So this is gonna seem really painful for a while, right? And that's why I want us to struggle with it. Um, but you can see, you know, once you're once you're actually practiced at this, like I am, you know, you can get this done in one afternoon. You can knock it out, right? So, I, I don't want you to like totally despair if you're having issues, you know, over the this next evening and day or so. Um, you know, again, I, I fully expect there to be some growing pains, some learning pains. Um, you know, that's, that's that happens. It's not that's not unusual, um, particularly when you're learning this stuff. See if I can just draw this outwards and I'll close that up in a minute. Same thing here. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna try to get it halfway aligned here. Go around here, dun, dun, dun. close up. Okay, where else do I have? And okay, cool. So I need to trim that. Trim, cutting object. I'm gonna trim, 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 and trim. Oh, I need to select this and trim. Outlines. Go from here to here. Snap, turn that back on, snap, turn that back off, snap there. Good. Okay, these medians are bugging me. I'm gonna turn these medians and convert them to the, the new layer so that they stay with the file here. No reason to redraw those. A pretty reasonable approximation of pavement in the middle of the street. Um, so I'm gonna go to the properties. I select them all, go to properties and put them on the street box layer. There we are. Yeah, that looks nice. Okay. I'll do this one as well, since that thing widens out a little bit. <laughs> My puppy dog just joined me in the room here. <laughs> See you, many. All right. So, um, are you guys getting the gist of what I'm doing here? Again, I don't expect you to learn or to, to know and memorize all the tools, but but conceptually, is this making sense? What what I'm going through and doing? 
um, you know, you can start to see this is starting to take shape as a nice sort of really nice uh, clean up working model here, um, at least working drawing. Here, I just have to finish this part and then finish this down here. Again, it takes a little bit of time. Hopefully you can have patience while you're doing this. You know, it's easier to say um, than uh, when you're practiced at it and you're not learning at all and there's not a big steep learning curve, but that's, this is exactly it, right? We're gonna hit this learning curve. It's gonna be steeper for some than others. Um, and those things sort of, you know, different people have different learning curves when it comes to different things that we're gonna be doing this semester. So again, if you need me to redo something or slow down, let me know, but I'm just going through here. I'm just gonna draw this block, draw this block, draw this block, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And I'll be done with that part. And I'm gonna go over how to give these things thickness and start to actually surface them. Right now I'm just sort of redrawing things um, so that they're cleaner. Um, but eventually I'm gonna turn all this stuff into three-dimensional um, solids and surfaces. So I just need to quickly do that. Won't take too long here. I like redrawing all of these so that I have, you know, I don't have a bunch of stray endpoints and things in different places. I just nice and clean. Okay, I just need to trim that. Use this, trim that. Right, get that muscle memory of what do you use left mouse click for. Right mouse click is the same as hitting enter on the keyboard. Right mouse click also when you're done with command will repeat the last command that you just did. So you don't have to keep going back and forth with your mouse. Right? So once you start to learn that stuff, it becomes second nature. This becomes a lot more easy, right? Some of the basic stuff that you might be um, making, slowing you down starts to become, um, really quite easy and, and, you know, thoughtless. Okay, let's see, how am I doing here? I'm trying to talk and draw at the same time. Sometimes that works, other times not so much. <laughs> so uh, here, let's see. Okay, draw that, draw that. Oops, I click the repeat the last command, start drawing more shapes. The nice thing is I'm sort of trying to keep things on layers and, and keep things saved out. So if somebody's having major problems with trying to project and make something plainer, tomorrow morning I'll have a, a clean file um, um, and that, that you can start to work on to, to trace and, and uh, we'll fill at these corners, these um, uh, block corners and, and things like that. So again, I don't want you to freak out. If you feel like you're behind somehow, And again, come prepared with your disastrous results. I wanna see them to make sure that you were really trying your best, but um, at the same time, don't worry about it because again, you'll come with lots of questions and those questions will be helpful for everybody to hear. And we'll all learn together. Sometimes I learn from other people's mistakes. And sometimes other people learn from my mistakes, right? So, um, let's see here. Really quickly, I'm almost done. Give this block a friend over here. Oop, didn't quite snap the right place. There we go. Corner, close. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, you know, I'm not full of myself, but eh, well done, Josh. It looks great. <laughs> All right, so again, I'm just gonna toggle back to my four viewports here. Here's my perspective view, right view, front view. Again, everything's sort of still in that XY plane. Everything's nice and planar and clean, hopefully. 
been snapping to things, uh, making sure that everything's uh, nice and nice and um, everything's in the right place. Let's put it that way. If you're a radio head fan, then you'll know exactly what I mean. All right, let's not lose sight of the fact that this is our site. <laughs> um, let's just quickly measure this. I'm gonna draw a line. And we said that was supposed to be 140 feet deep, right? Let me just double check, but pretty sure we said 140 by 25. So I'm gonna draw a 140 foot line. And we're close, but I'm gonna modify our site boundaries here. I'll draw a 140 foot line down here. Okay, now I'll just reclose those up here. Now that was 140 back from the sidewalk and whatever easement right away of the sidewalk, right? So we have to make a decision and look at the at some of the information to sort of understand what the width of the sidewalk is, right? But we can zoom in on this and work on the details maybe tomorrow together, okay? Because um, we can always redo just this portion of the site model, not that big of a deal. Let's look at some of the next steps here, okay? I'm gonna turn back my, turn my outline back on. This is my original outline curves. I'm gonna go and take these big outer curves that I used and drew my sort of cropping curves. Okay, and I'm going to put those on a new layer. I'm gonna make a new layer in my layers. I'll call this one um, cropping boundary, something like that, just so I know it's the overall sort of boundary of my model and my map and everything else. So I've created that new layer. I've selected these things. I'm going to go to their properties and make sure that I change it to the, the layer to cropping boundary layer. Okay. And turn that outline off now. All right. So a couple of things here. One, I'm going to look at this in 3D. You can see that these uh, edges here, these larger edges that I just put at the, the cropping boundary. Oops. Oh, there it is. When I accidentally select something I don't want, I can hit control and unselect it. There we go. Yeah. So let's get that curve. It's saying, okay, which curve do you really want to select? I'm gonna pick that one, that one, and that one. I'm gonna join these together in order to make it one closed shape. So I can just select it once and I'll select all four sides, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and type in the command join. And it tells me when I, after I've selected all four curves and it says four curves joined into one closed curve. Well, that's good. That's a nice closed curve. I can select it all at once. That's good. Okay. Now I know that this is closed curve and I know it's planar. Okay. So let's go to the surface tools. I'm going to look at some of these other surface tools that we have. And um, I'm going to say this one, second one over, right along the top here, surface from planar curves. Okay. So what this does is it takes a set of planar curves that are closed and it fills that shape in with the surface. Now you can see, because I have this set to shaded or ghosted or something, you can see a sort of grayish silver surface, right? All right. Which is exactly what I wanted. Yay. I'm gonna select that surface. I wanna make sure I keep it in the right layer. I'm gonna put that as cropping boundary as well. Right, make sure these are on the same layer together. All right. Um, now this is gonna be acting like this sort of street surface. So I'm actually gonna differentiate this. For instance, the, the street's actually gonna be a little lower than the top of the blocks, right? Because we have sidewalk and then we have a curb down, let's say six inches and then street, right? So I'm actually gonna move this surface that I drew down six inches. So I'm gonna go 
back to my four viewports, and I'm going to use. It's easier to move things in Z, right, from a side view. So I'm going to go ahead and use the move tool, or just type in move. Make sure I have that surface that I made selected. Here in the front view. All right. I'm going to turn my ortho on, so I can just move in the Z direction only. And I'm going to type in. I'm I'm working in feet and inches, so I could type in six, and then um, hit shift and and hit the the sort of double the quotation. Um, double um, uh, 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 stash for um, for inches, or I can just type in 0.5, right? So I'm modeling feet, 0.5 feet, right? We all know that's six inches. So let me just make sure that I'm going down. There we go. You can see I moved that six inches down, just that surface there. All right, so let's see here. Um, I can turn that layer off. I'm going to look at the street blocks now. And let's see here. There's several different ways I can do this. I can extrude as a solid, or I can um, uh, put these as planar surfaces, then offset them. So I'll show you several different ways you can begin to, to uh, do this. There's no right or wrong way necessarily. Um, but uh, um, however, um, I just want to show you that there, you know, several different ways you can approach this, and and so doing, you'll sort of learn about several different um, surfacing tools here. Okay, so the first one that we just did, right? Surface from planar curve. I'm going to go ahead and give it a closed planar curve like this one. It's going to fill it in with a surface, right? Now it's going to be a paper thin surface, right? I'm going to do that here. I'll do this for a few of them over here. Say this this uh, grouping of blocks over here. Okay. Um, now what I need to do is actually like offset this in order to give it some thickness, right? So I have a surface already. I'll go ahead and select all three. I'm going to type in offset, right? It's actually right here, offset surface. Okay. I can give it a distance to offset, in this case 0.5, right? And then it's going to also draw these arrows for me to tell me which direction it wants to offset by default. If I wanted to change that, um, I could say flip them and up to offset them upwards, or I could have offset them downwards, which I'm gonna do, I'm gonna offset them downwards. Okay, and um, I'm also gonna say distance, 0.5, solid, yes. I'm gonna make sure that solid is set to yes. If it's set to no, I can click it and set it to yes. So you can see, not only does it tell you like what it needs um, from an ingredient standpoint, every time you do a command in the command line, um, but it'll also give you any settings and parameters that you can adjust here and there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. Now it actually, if I zoom in here, right, it actually offset those into a solid. And when I turn my street on, You can see that I basically have a block and then a street, you know, underneath. So that's one way to do that. Sorry, just a bunch of people making noise upstairs. Let me just close the door to my office. Let's see if that helps a little bit. All right. Let's see here. Now, another way of doing this is we'll use extrude, right? So we can type in the command extrude. Maybe it's saying extrude curve. I guess you can, there's more than one type of extrude. So we can say extrude curve. So I'll go ahead and do these sets of blocks using the, the extrude command here. Ah, I didn't join these together. So I'm going to. Hit my control and unselect those. I'll just do these joint ones here. Okay. Now it's going to say, okay, what direction do you want to extrude? How far do you want to extrude? And do you want it to go both sides? And do you want it to be solid? Right. So let's take a look at this one by one. First of all, I'm going to set the direction to be down. So I'm going to go make sure that I'm in one of the side views here, so I can make sure that I'm you know, I'm going down in direction here. I don't want to go up. I want to go down. Um, and I'm going to change the distance. So um, direction, I'm going to say solid is yes, right? And then for um, 
distance, I'm going to say 0.5, enter that in the keyboard, and hit enter. Okay. And so I did basically the same thing, right? Extrude these into a solid for me. Again, there's no right or wrong way of doing this, right? Now, over here, I mentioned that I have an open shape and then I have another end like this. I, I want to select all of those and type in the command join. And I look at the command curve, it says two curves were joined into one closed curve. I'm going to do the same thing over here. That's perfect. That's what I want. I'm going to select all of those, and type in join. It tells me again, two curves joined into one closed curve. Now I can extrude or, or um, extrude those to as a solid or um, make a planar surface and offset it as a solid, you know, either way. I was doing extrude, so maybe I'll just do that then. Make sure that it's going down, right? Here in my, let's say my right view, go 0.5 and hit enter. Oh yeah, look at that, okay. And so now I'm starting to develop a three-dimensional side model, right? And the next steps will be turning on our building outlines and extruding those as solids, okay, um, to the correct heights. Right? We'll save that for tomorrow, maybe, okay? Um, at least showing that and going through those steps and reminding you that, that it'll be something that you're gonna be doing over the weekend and you know, we'll see how far we get, okay? So I feel like almost like between the, the trouble, the technical glitches, technical difficulties for one or two of you, um, and uh, just the speed that I'm going, the, the amount of new stuff I'm throwing at you, maybe I've thrown enough new stuff at you for today. Is that, is that fair? Maybe I can stop recording and um, I can leave Zoom so that the, the video starts to process. I come right back to Zoom. And then um, this can just be work time for you, okay? Um, work time for you, and I'm here to answer any questions or help help fix anything, okay? Definitely have to watch the video again, okay? And that's fine. That's why I want to get the video going as soon as possible. So I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to stop recording.